In 1784, Franklin County became Georgia's eighth official county, encompassing a huge amount of territory, but part of it was claimed by South Carolina and a large piece was broken off in 1796 to become Jackson County. In 1801, the Georgia Assembly decided to grant some land to the newly established Franklin College in Southeast Jackson, thereby creating Clark County. A town started growing up around Franklin College, which was called Athens. This funky little town kept growing as more colleges were founded and joined with Franklin College to become a university. At this point, Athens was outgrowing even the Clark County seat which was in Watkinsville at that time. In 1872, the seat was officially moved to Athens to reflect its growing importance. But that left the people of Watkinsville a little bitter, so they petitioned the state for their own county, which they got in 1875. They named this new county Oconee for the river along which the new border was drawn. This left Clark, a pitifully small land area, the smallest in Georgia, and as Athens kept growing, it wasn't hard to eventually take over the whole county, and that was formalized by unification in 1991. That leaves us with two counties, who are neighbors but who have been growing along two different paths ever since the University of Georgia was founded. So how big have these differences become 200 years later? Let's take a look. This is Athens and Oconee County Compared. The average county nationwide takes up a bit over 1,100 square miles. In Georgia, we pack them in a little tighter at 362 square miles on average. By these standards, athens Clark is a lightweight, clocking in at only 116. Oconee is bigger but still fairly small at 184 square miles. Even if the two were added back together, a reunified Clark would still be below average for a Georgia county. But Athens packs a lot into a small package. As of 2010, Athens had 992 people per square mile, making ACC over five times denser than the mostly rural Oconee. Athens has been growing at a faster rate as well. The whole county of Oconee isn't up quite yet to the population that just the city of Athens had before unification. Now a quick peek at the demographics. As we all know, Oconee has more people of the white variety and Athens has more black people, about five times the percentage, and Athens also has twice the percentage of Latinx people. Incomes are another big point of difference between the two counties. Athens has a five-year poverty estimate at 34%, much higher than the Georgia average of 14%. Oconee? Let's just say they're doing all right down there. Their median household income is over $77,000. All of these stats tend to correlate with differences in political opinion as well. Athens votes for Democratic presidents at more than double the rate of Oconee, but Oconee consistently beats Athens in turnout. Moving on to economic growth. I've often heard from people concerned about Athens businesses moving to Oconee. This is definitely happening in some areas of town, but as a whole, which county is actually growing faster? Before we see the numbers, let's find out what they're saying on the street. Do you think that businesses are growing faster in Oconee County or in Athens? I really don't know about that. Probably Athens. I'd say probably Oconee with the new Mar Epsbridge Parkway and everything. I'm not sure they're growing at all. They think, I think they're yeah. shrinking, actually. Oh, for sure, Athens. UGA, Athens, but it's going to be high on rent, so Oconee outskirt just to be on the safe side. Seems about even. If you look at sales tax collection, Athens seems to maybe be growing a hair faster than Oconee. Hmm, is that right? Computer, adjust for inflation. Seems about even now, I think. Um, normalize to 100% and zoom in. There it is. This may be the reason why some people think Oconee is growing faster. It is, as a percentage of their total. Oconee fell further in the recession, relatively speaking, and grew quicker in the recovery. Being from Athens, that doesn't bother me because Athens' economy is so much bigger overall. Well, let's move on, because it's time to talk about education. Hey! People on the street, I want to know, which county has the better school system, do you think? 
I think they're better in Oconee. I think the schools in Oconee are better. I really don't know. I'm not sure. I don't have kids here. Okay. Oconee. I would have to say uh, Oconee. So that was unanimous. But what do the facts say? Well, the first thing we should find out are what kinds of students are going into each school system. People of color make up 80% of athens Clark County students, as opposed to only about 20% in Oconee. That's a big difference. 46% of athens Clark students are economically disadvantaged, compared to only about 9% in Oconee. Already, we can tell that the kids in Clark probably have some challenges that they just don't have to deal with in Oconee. Do you think going hungry or not getting as much help from your parents might lead to lower test scores? Yeah, yeah it does. It turns out that academic achievement is very correlated to income. This is not the fault of any one teacher or school or even school system. But this is a comparison video, so let's take a look at our kids' reading levels. Oconee kids start with a big edge over their athens Clark counterparts, and that advantage is maintained as they get older. That's true even though we spend thousands more per student every year here in Athens than they do in Oconee. Our graduation rate is worse, and our college enrollment rate is even worser. Overall, athens Clark gets a D from the state government, whereas Oconee gets a solid B. Does this mean we have bad schools in Clark County? I don't think that our Clark County schools are bad. I would never use that term to describe our school. Lakeisha Gant, president of the Clark County School Board, so glad you could join us. So I want to be clear that I'm not speaking on behalf of Clark County School Board. Okay, you're just speaking for yourself. I understand. How do you think parents should use these assessments from the state government in deciding where their children should go to school? As parents, typically we want to do what's right for our child. As with anything, we know assessments are, they are limited. And so I would encourage parents to look at a variety of different things, like go into our schools, talk to our teachers, speak with our principals, speak with the, you know, thousands of people that, that have their children here. So gather as much information as you can to make a more informed decision about where to place your child. If we're only making decisions based on like what my friends told me, or what I've seen based on like state rating or what I see in the media or based on my fear, then ultimately, you know, it actually just reinforces that narrative. You know, the key question is, what am I moving from? Like, what am I looking for? And what am I afraid will happen if I send my child here, right? Because we know, like, students who have, who generally have support from home, like earlier intervention, access to resources, those students tend to do well regardless. So what exactly are people um, running towards and away from? I think sometimes these state boards, they serve as a way to lessen cognitive dissonance for parents who make the decision to send their kids elsewhere. Please subscribe for more videos about local news, state politics, and national policy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.